Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, since my proof of Islam video, you know that I'm somewhat obsessed with Imam Al Ghazali. Today, we're going to react to eye opening Al Ghazali quotes by the channel Simply Motivation. My appreciation and fascination with Al Ghazali comes from him pursuing philosophy, becoming a major philosopher, and then ultimately debunking philosophy. Moreover, him realizing during self-reflection that his motivation to become a scholar was ultimately egocentrical. It was led by the ego and this when he decides to go for a pilgrimage and he leaves for over 11 years. He simply disappears. Nobody knows where he is. And then finally he returns as a Sufi master where he confirms the mystics prior to him, realizing that nothing can beat real life experience, that knowledge, rationality only brings brings you so far. You will have to return to intuitive thinking, to intuitive perception, the instinct to truly experience God. I can't wait for his quotes in today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. Do not allow your heart to take pleasure with the praises of people, nor be saddened by their condemnation. Exactly right. The AI generated voice sounds a little bit like Alan Watts here. The quote, do not allow your heart to take pleasure with the praises of people, nor be saddened by their condemnation is absolutely correct because all of those people will die. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It is a temporal judgment of certain people. Haters gonna hate. Some people will praise you. Other people will tell you that you are nothing. But ultimately, you will have to follow the path of God. Knowledge without action is wastefulness. An action without knowledge is foolishness. Self-explanatory, absolutely correct. When we're speaking about religion, this is something that I personally do not resonate with. There are certain people that simply study the books over and over again. In Christianity, we call them Bible thumpers. They can tell you everything about the Bible, every little story they memorized, but ultimately there is no action in their knowledge. Back in the day, I saw that in the pickup community. Nowadays, you call it the red pill community. I'm a bit older. Back in the day, we called it Pick Up. It was all about how to seduce women. And I started reading those books. After two books or so, I let them aside and I actually went out and pursued women. But other people fell into the trap of simply reading those books. And they would tell me, Bobby, I just have to read this. I have to meditate now. I have to understand, internalize, and then I will be able to pursue women. Absolutely ridiculous. All of that knowledge didn't bring them anything because they didn't put it into action. To get what you love, you must first be patient with what you hate. Yes, very correct. In Islam, you call it sabr, patience. In Christianity, we say patience is a virtue. Ultimately, you will become what you hate anyways. Look at me, man. I hated Islam and now I am studying Islam. I can tell you from experience that everything that I hated in my life, later on, I pursued. It's quite interesting. So therefore, have patience. Don't even focus on the hate. Let it go and then will come a time when you can focus on what you love. Desires make Make slaves out of kings and patience makes kings out of slaves. Exactly right. Yet again, patience is a virtue, but moreover, this reminds me of a parable of the Bible. Thus, a good man, though a slave, is free, but a wicked man, though a king, is a slave. For he serves not one man alone, but what is worse, as many masters as he has vices. So here we see that a slave that does not sin has only one master, one master that controls his life, so to speak. But the king, the rich man that is sinful, boastful, he has as many masters as he has sin. No matter what your sin is, be it alcohol, be it women, be it riches, be it food, you're a glutton, all of those things become your master. Never have I dealt with anything more difficult than my own soul, which sometimes helps me and sometimes opposes me. Yes, this is what happens when we look within and this is what Al Ghazali did later in his life. You're not focusing on the outward anymore, but you truly become introspective and look at yourself. And this is true ownership, true responsibility, realizing that you can change only yourself. Dear friend, your heart is a polished mirror. You must wipe it clean of the veil of dust that has gathered upon it. 
because it is destined to reflect the light of divine secrets. Yes, we have the same notion in Orthodox Christianity of purifying the heart ultimately. You cannot receive God's light if your heart is impure. Offend love between two people intensifies not because of beauty or some advantage, but because of sheer spiritual affinity. Sure, this is the love beyond the flesh. Whoever says that all music is prohibited, let him also claim that the songs of birds are prohibited. This resonates deeply with me personally, and yes, I do understand that the orthodox Islamic claim is that all music is haram, that it's all prohibited, and ultimately I do understand that the prohibition of music would ultimately stop the pop culture degeneracy. Moreover, I do understand the spiritual practice of abstaining from music, because music always puts you into an emotion and brings you away from the current moment. I absolutely get that but to fully prohibit music forever and ever I couldn't agree with for example I'm a father and I do understand how my little son is affected by music when I play him a child song and he starts dancing a little bit I am of the firm conviction that there is a good measure with music as well the happiness of the drop is to die in the river yeah, this is absolutely deep and cannot be fully understood without mystical experience. This reminds me obviously yet again of my own spiritual mystical experiences. What happened there is that I realized that I am ultimately made of the same fabric of everything around me. That I am simply a drop in the ocean. However, I didn't realize that prior to the mystical experience. I simply thought of myself as an entity, as a separated self. Then when I realized that I am a drop, I asked myself, where do I belong? And of course, I belonged in the ocean. And once you experience that merging into the ocean, you experience unity consciousness, you experience that you're one with everything. It's There's something that you can't really intellectualize, though. Set the hearts of learned men. He answered, men whose hearts are changed by money are not learned. Yes, absolutely correct. And this again reminds me of the Bible because people refer to the Bible falsely and they say that money is the root of all evil. That is not correct. If you look into the Bible, it says the love of money is the root of all evil. So money itself is simply an exchange medium. That's it. Once you start worshipping money, this is the problem. And Ghazali describes it beautifully here, of course, because he says if money upsets your heart, then you are not learned at all. Each of your breaths is a priceless jewel. Since each of them is irreplaceable and once gone, can never be retrieved. That's true, man. One breath closer the to death. The way to paradise is an uphill climb, whereas hell is downhill. Hence, there is a struggle to get to paradise and not to hell. Sinning is easy, bro. Anybody can do it. A human being is not a human being, while his tendencies include self-indulgence, covetousness, temper, and attacking other people. Exactly correct. What he is describing here is the ego. And you cannot be a human being if you're trapped in your ego box. Yet again, today I'm going to talk a lot about the Bible when Jesus says, in order to receive the kingdom of heaven, you have to become like children. I believe that Islamically speaking, this would be the fitrah. We have to return to our natural state, the natural state that we are in as children. And a child does not want to harm others or self-indulge. Those are tendencies that we adapt later on in life. Do not dispute with anyone in any matter as far as possible. For in argumentation lies much harm, and its evil is greater than its benefit. So true, yet again. And this is what I see with so many debates nowadays on YouTube. Nowadays, people don't debate out of good faith. They don't really want to be won over, at least 99% of the time. They simply want to win a debate. And in those debates, they feel personally attacked because those two egos are battling. And like that, they're not learning anything. Moreover, people stay within their own box. So therefore, what is really happening? The truth is not exposed here. People love to stay in their own falsehood as long as they win the debate. The corruption of religions comes from turning them to mere words and appearances. 100% correct. And this is why, yet again, I cannot resonate with an absolute literal interpretation of anything. Word by word, word by word, those words become physical and ultimately those words become idols. You start worshipping those texts instead of looking within. This visible world is a trace of that invisible one and the former follows the latter like a shadow. Yes, a manifestation of God. Whoever passes 40 without his virtue overpowering his vice, let him get ready for hellfire. This advice contains enough for people of knowledge. 
Absolutely correct. If you haven't learned the lesson by 40, you're doomed. I would People say even by 30. People satisfaction the number of times they have recited the name of God on their prayer beads. But they keep no beads for reckoning the number of idle words they speak. This is the focus on good deeds only and people believe that if they do good deeds they're rewarded even more and therefore who cares about the bad deeds. You possess only whatever will not be lost in the shipwreck. <laughs> so you don't possess the anything. The hypocrite looks for faults. The believer looks for excuses. The hypocrite looks for faults. The believer looks for excuses. I don't resonate with this quote because I would say that the hypocrite looks for faults and excuses. The believer simply adheres to what God commanded. He submits to his will. Therefore, he doesn't look for faults or excuses. Knowledge exists potentially in the human soul, like the seed in the soil. By learning the potential becomes actual. Everything exists as potentiality in the human soul. For example, if you think about breakdance, the potential for those moves was already within the human soul and the human body. But for thousands of years, humans did not move like that. Only when they started discovering the potential of their soul, the potential of their bodies, they started moving like that. So therefore, the potential of the soul is vast like an ocean and we find out about it every single day. If you do not prepare now for the afterlife, then when will you do so? <laughs> Later. Mm. Whoever determines the truth from people alone will remain lost in the plains of bewilderment. Rather know the truth and you will know its people. Exactly right. Yet again, guys, today is Bible study day. The truth shall set you free and let no man teach you. El Ghazali describes here that you cannot really learn from any man. Of course, you can listen to them for inspiration, etc., etc. But the real change will happen within yourself. The truth is already within yourself. Think about it. If all the potential in the world is within your soul, the truth is within your soul as well. No matter what a scholar says, no matter what a priest says, the truth is already within you. So once you start focusing on that truth, you will start to see who's actually upon the truth and who is not. Work for your terrestrial life in proportion to your location in it and work for your afterlife in proportion to your eternity in it. Sure. Self-explanatory. Do not fix hopes on your health and do not laugh away life. Remember how they walk and now all their joints lie separately and the tongue with which they talk lightly is eaten away by the worms. Yes, this is a hard lesson that we learn when we're getting older. Now I'm 35 and thank God I still have some vitality in my body. But nevertheless, I'm not the same that I was in my 20s. And this is why it is so important to not focus on our attributes of strength and vitality because it all will fade. The mere physical man is like the ant crawling on the paper who observes black lettering and attributes its production to the pen and nothing more. Mm, no creator. Only that which cannot be lost in a shipwreck is yours. We already had that one. He who buries his head deep into a nose bag full of food cannot hope to see the invisible world. Absolutely not. This is why fasting is so important. Fasting is a spiritual experience because we get away from the flesh body. If we let the flesh body suffer to an extent, we can get away from it and actually witness the spiritual realm that lays beyond. Therefore, gluttony is a sin within the Christian context. If you focus on food, you cannot focus on God. Love for God is the farthest reach of all stations, the sun of the highest degrees, and there is no station after that of love except its fruit and its consequences. Correct. It's the only real love. Every yes. other love is just a portion of that love, a diluted version of that love. The sincere, pure love is the love for God. And then after that, you have romantic love, you have love for your family, love for your children, etc., etc. The sense of knowledge is to know what obedience and worship are. Yes. Without it, nothing works. Understand that for every rule which I have mentioned from the Quran, the devil has one to match it which he puts beside the proper rule to cause error. Sure. You always have a different explanation for the same exact thing. The glass is half empty or maybe it's half full. He who does not arrive at the intuition of these truths by means of ecstasy knows only the name of inspiration. And there you can clearly see that he was a Sufi because Sufis bring themselves into an ecstatic state and there they can receive the knowledge of the universe, the knowledge of God, so to speak.
All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Yet again, I'm absolutely amazed with this man, Al Ghazali, and his words. It resonates deeply with me because my journey growing up as a Christian, then leaving Christianity and entering the mysticism, the spiritual practices, the shamanism, ultimately then left me in a state of separation because I wanted to return to God, but somehow I didn't understand how to integrate all of those mystical teachings within Christianity. Orthodoxy, I could not find it. Even though there was a huge spiritual mystical component to Orthodoxy, I couldn't comprehend where the unity of things fits in. But nevertheless, my knowledge of the absolute reality that God is ultimately one, I could not embed into the framework of the Trinity. And this is why I kept on searching, I kept on looking, and only Islam framed God, explained God the way that I experienced God. Only Islam had the answer to that one God. But then looking further, especially into the Salafi school of thought, I found a spiritual dryness yet again. It simply does not resonate with me, this literalistic approach. I need to know, I need to understand within myself, otherwise the experience is not real. And this is why I'm fascinated by the Sufi thought, and I believe this is where my journey is headed. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.